Our next speaker is going to talk about the new consumer and the future of FMCG and hopefully build on another perspective that you need to be very well aware of. The Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Unilever Pakistan Limited, may I please request Mr. Amir Paracha to join me on the podium. Thank you, Rabia. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. And a very good morning to the distinguished guests attending Pakistan's first future retail conference here in Karachi today. It's indeed a personal honor uh, to be present here with all the esteemed members of uh, the Chain Stores uh, Association of Pakistan, uh, who I believe is the largest trade body of the organized retailers representing more than 200 stores uh, with a combined footprint of more than 20,000 outlets and uh, most importantly providing directly and indirectly livelihood to around 1 million people plus in the country. Uh, I would also like to take opportunity to thank uh, Terabis, particularly Hamza, for uh, organizing this event and uh, persevering through the fifth wave of COVID and really holding this uh, physical event after a long, long time. Uh, and I think so it's great to see all uh, people from different diverse backgrounds, from tech startup, from uh, regulators, and also established organizations to discuss what's going to be the future of the retail industry in Pakistan and how together we are going to be serving the consumers of today and tomorrow. Now, given the esteemed nature of the audience I am uh, talking to today, the reality is you yourselves are actually the titans of the industry. You guys know all the mega trends happening uh, around you. Uh, you are aware um, what is uh, the realities of operating in the Pakistani environment uh, better than we do. Uh, but uh, the question I asked myself before coming here, that uh, uh, a humble soup and a soap maker, uh, what I have to basically tell the experts here. And that made me to deeply contemplate uh, before coming here. And I came to a realization that over my last uh, around 25 years of career in our FMCG industry, and also the tectonic shifts taking place um, around us, particularly in the last three to five years, it's important that uh, we understand what's been happening. So well, we have been living a model which is called the pipeline business model. Now what's a pipeline business model? Pipeline business model is which Unilever has actually, or many organizations, like Procter and many old organizations have developed some hundred years back, is uh, producing a gate product in a factory, uh, making it go through the distribution network to thousands of the retailers, uh, developing relationship uh, with a retailer and then basically getting it listed in the physical stores or in the physical aisles, creating a consumer pull through massive investment in media and getting your product basically fly off the shelf. The reality is this pipeline model has served us very well in the, far, in the last say five or six, seven decades. But the reality is it's not going to serve us anymore because now we are talking to people who are digitally connected. Uh, and these are 140 million people in Pakistan alone. The way they operate is very, very different. Uh, to them, it's not really a matter whether the product is available on the physical store or on the physical aisle itself or not. What it matters is how many people are actually uh, searching the product. How many people are actually, how many products are actually trending online? And what actually excites them more than the product is a journey, is really placing the order online, uh, in how much time you get the product delivered at your home, the experience of unpacking the product, um, and in case if you don't like the product, then the whole experience of replacing or returning the product frictionlessly. Now that's a new world we are actually getting into. So the question I ask you today is, do we all really ready for this kind of future in Pakistan? Is the industry ready for that? Are we all sitting here from the retail sector? Are we ready for this kind of 
the generation which is about to come. Now to help answer this critical question, it's important to understand the future landscape of uh, Pakistan, the potential, and also so as business leaders will be able to design our business accordingly. Now, before I go into the future, I would like to take you back in the past. And I would like to share three experiences of mine. I have China to Alibaba head office. So, the Unilever China team came to a store. visit store was a store called Unique, it was called Future Species. नाम से यूनिक नहीं था जब हम वहाँ पे पहुँचे तो जिस तरह वो ऑपरेट कर रहा था वो भी बहुत यूनिक था वो एक बहुत ही एक्सपेंसिव डिस्ट्रिक्ट में था जहाँ पे रियल स्टेट काफी महंगी होती है सो जब हम स्टोर में गए तो इट वाज लाइक अ टिपिकल ग्रोसरी स्टोर जहाँ पे फिजिकली प्रोडक्ट आइल्स में पड़े उनका जो मोबाइल था वो प्रैक्टिकली उनकी वर्चुअल ट्रॉली थी और हर प्रोडक्ट के ऊपर क्यूआर कोड लगा हुआ था और वो प्रोडक्ट को टच करके फील करके वो क्यूआर कोड से वर्चुअली अपने ट्रॉली में डाल रहा था एंड बाय द बाय द टाइम द पर्सन इज डन विद द शॉपिंग दे वर ऑफ बिकॉज़ देयर वाज नो कैश स्टिल एंड देयर वाज नो क्यू रिक्वायर्ड दे पेड थ्रू द अली पे एंड द प्रोडक्ट्स डिलीवर्ड एट होम now, what has happened in this entire process? They, the, the, the creator chucked out all the non-value added services. वो पूरी जो हैसल है कि आप अपनी पूरी एक ट्रॉली नेविगेट कर रहे हैं आइल्स के साथ एक दूसरे के साथ टकरा रही हैं वो ने चक आउट कर दिया वो पूरी हैसल कि यार मुझे अब क्यों में खड़ा होना मुझे पैसे देने हैं वो ने चक आउट कर दिया और वो पूरी एक हैसल कि मुझे अब शॉपिंग बैग में उठा के गाड़ी तक मैं ड दूसरी तरफ जो रिटेलर को फायदा हुआ कि एक बहुत ही एक्सपेंसिव डिस्ट्रिक्ट के अंदर उसने जीरो इन्वेंटरी मेंटेन की हुई है वो दुकान सिर्फ एक शोरूम है वो प्रोडक्ट उठाता है वो उसको वहां पे वापस रख देता है उसको वहां पे मर्चेंडाइजेस की जरूरत नहीं है वहां पे उस प्रोडक्ट को रिप्लेनिश नहीं कर रहा वहां पे कोई कैश स्टिल नहीं है वहां पे कोई कैश की रिकंसिलिएशन की जरूरत नहीं है उसको कोई कैश जमा कराने की जरूरत नहीं है वो ऑटो रिकंसाइल हो रहा है बीके जो कि अली पे कर रहा है एंड the best of both the best of both the worlds roll into one yeah, which is hybrid which we called digital so that's the first experience which i experienced 4 years back yeah um, the second experience i had was uh, nadeem sahab ne bhi zikr kiya hai how the economy can go cashless on the same trip we wanted to have a coffee we went to the coffee shop we bought coffee and was about to pay money, so I offered to pay on my, on behalf of my team. But the moment I took out cash, the whole ecosystem refused to take cash because they said, we can't take cash because we don't have a system to take cash, by the way. And the only way you can pay is digital. So, of course, there was a junior member of the Unilever China team. She offered to pay through Alipay. But what was more embarrassing when I offered to give her cash because I wanted to settle the bill, she looked at me incredulously and she said, well, I haven't touched and seen cash for the last 24 months and I don't know what to do with this cash. Uh, and I was more, uh, well, in a state of a fix that I want to settle, she's not willing to take cash. And that's the way how the economy can go cashless, which Nadeem Sahib talked about is about to happen in this country and we got to be ready for this. And the last thing is uh, the most in interesting part. And uh, it's about uh, the most remarkable experience during the trip. And I also plan to go and visit JD.com. Now, JD.com is the second biggest player in China and uh, after uh, Alibaba. And uh, we took a tour of this sprawling facility. Yeah. So, when we went to facility, which Shanghai, se bahar tha, uh, and we asked them, that, listen, we want to look at your facility. They said, well, we have generation one, two, three, four, and a five warehousing facility. And this is four years back. Uh, we said, okay, fine, where are you taking us? They said, we are not allowed to take you to generation four and five because it's pretty confidential. It's only for the local staff. We'll take you a generation three facility. Yeah. And this is again four years back, and I don't know what 
more generations they have come up with. So this facility was, uh, just to give you a context, is uh, uh, 1.5 times the area covered uh, by, for example, National Stadium here in Karachi. By the way, by now, they have around more than 1,300 such facilities in China alone of this size. Uh, and uh, the best part is the whole process of pick, pack, and dispatch takes them less than under seven minutes by four people in that entire facility processing 200,000 parcels in 24 hours. And that facility was a cobweb of conveyor belts. All censored, those belts were going straight into the vans, 10 vans outside, sorted by area, and here you go. <clears throat> and when you talk about this online, which is you want to really get everything now, that's what it is all about. So the reason I spoke about these instances now to bring you back to the future. Firstly, the future that we imagine and we envisage yeah, about Pakistan is already a reality in many other countries. Yeah. Uh, so I've talked about there are five retail generations here. Yeah. Pakistan is uh, most probably in retail generation one or at best two. Yeah. China is practically in a retail generation uh, four. And uh, the fifth retail generation, which we have been talking about, is actually metaverse, which you guys may have been hearing a lot, yeah? where people are going to have their own avatars, and you're going to be basically buying your product in that virtual reality. And all the retailers sitting here, you got to start getting ready because you have to now start buying real estate on virtual, not physically. So there's already a transaction started to happen. People are buying real estate on the virtual reality and that's, that's what the reality is going to go be about. So what I want to really basically take you to my most important point and that's the end actually is uh, I want to stress with the audience today is while there's a lot of investors excitement, there's a lot of deal momentum and rapid growth across the startup and digital economy of Pakistan. My fear is that the euphoria of securing the next venture capital round by our young and budding entrepreneurs might uh, take their eyes off the ball in terms of where they need to focus their energies, their time, and their resources. While change is absolutely necessary in the areas of demand creation and demand capture, which by the way, the new age companies have done very, very well, and I must appreciate them, uh, but they're not seeing enough resource allocation in upgradation of our fulfillment capabilities as an industry. And I hope Sarah is going to be talking about because I'm not the logistics expert and she is, but I think so where we need to really start spending. There's been an exponential growth in national store print. Yes, there's been an exponential growth in the innovation of the last mile delivery. Yes, there's been an exponential growth in the warehousing capacity by 10 times the last three years. It will be all waste of these capabilities if they are not connected as part of a shared ecosystem which is powered by fully autonomous artificial intelligence, machine-driven forecasting, intelligent automation, and highly skilled human operators to unlock the efficiency that's stuck in our old and legacy ways of doing businesses. Today, everyone is busy fighting being the fastest. I will deliver in 40 minutes, I will do it in 30 minutes, I will do it in 15 minutes, I will do it in 10 minutes. And everyone is trying to acquire a customer on their platform basis this promise. And in this process of being the fastest, instant of amount of cash is being burnt just because they wanted to be the fastest. Well, there's no problem with being the fastest, but I have started to personally experience, as you start to actually get more and more people onboarded on your platform, and you start getting orders on your platform, there's been now more and more out of stock on these platforms, and I've personally been experiencing, yeah, because they have not been able to cope the traffic. And why they have not been able to cope the traffic? Because they have not invested in the backbone of this entire process, which is autonomous warehousing. 
And that's where the whole system comes down crashing. What we all need to do is to really start focusing, investing into this space. And people sitting here, I understand, retailers, investors, I can guarantee you, and I promise companies like Unilever and hundreds of other conglomerates will not only work with you, but are willing to partner if you are willing to bring a JD.com kind of a partner, an investor, and, uh, and as far as sitting here, would love to basically have big partners coming from China because they know how to put up these big facilities. And I think so there is a lot to do in this back-end uh, warehousing facility. And I think so this is where we should be really working towards. And together, we need to work together. Uh, I think the times are gone where the competition used to be treated as an enemy. They are now to be treated like r worthy rivals. The coins, someone phrased a very nice coin, uh, which is called fremini, frenemies, which is more like a friendship, an enemy. And I think that's the way we need to basically create a shared platform economy rather than that old pipeline economy where you used to be possessed about your own stuff rather than creating uh, a shared economy. I have to say one thing, this digital economy is a great equalizer. It's giving everyone the, uh, uh, the level playing field. And uh, I'm sure given the collective wisdom in this uh, hall today, I'm very confident in our abilities to rise to the occasion and the challenges. And I'm very, very confident that we will be the masters of our own bright future. Thank you.